So, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. The 23rd online meeting of the Rotary Club of Makati for Rotary Year 2020 to 2021. I am President elect Lumia Seoche and I will be your moderator for today. For your information, today's meeting is a joint meeting with the Rotary Club of Makati Premier District. And this will be our third joint meeting with this club this Rotary year. We had a joint meeting with them last October 20 with Mr. Nestor Tan of PTO as our guest speaker. And just three or four weeks back, last January 12, with Mr. Piki Lopez of the Lopez Group as speaker. It may also interest you to know that this will be the second time that our guest speaker, Secretary Ebot Perio, will be talking to our club. The first was in August 2016, when he discussed the peace process efforts with the CPP and PA. To officially start the meeting, may I call on the President Peter Manzano, Manzano of the Rotary Club of Bacati, and President Vicky Dad for the Rotary Club of Bacati, to call this meeting to order. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians, our lovely aunts and guests. I now call this joint meeting with the Rotary Club of Makati Premier District and our 24th regular meeting of the Rotary Club of Makati to order. President Kiki, please. Good afternoon, everyone. In behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati Premier District, I call this meeting to order. Now, to introduce our guest speaker, may I now call on Ms. Violi Munoz. You're on mute. Uh, Ms. Violi, you're on mute. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, President Peter Mansano of Rotary Club of Makati, President Vicky Trinidad of Rotary Club of Makati Premier District, ladies and gentlemen. My daughter is also a fellow Rotarian, May Munoz. I have worked with the Department of Labor and Employment for 43 years, immediately after graduating from the university and, uh, ju and just retired in 2018. My daughter said, perhaps I should be the one to invite and make the introduction for the guest of honor and uh, speaker for this afternoon. Our speaker will be talking about partnering with the private sector in promoting the benefits and safety and health of workers amidst the COVID-19 current situation. I am sure that this topic will be deeply appreciated by the private sector because you would want to know what are the efforts being done by the Department of Labor and Employment in promoting employment and collaborating with the private sector because these are crucial in our journey to to a robust economic recovery. Our guest of honor and speaker has a degree in Bachelor of Laws from the University, from the Ateneo de Manila University. He is a lawyer. He is a political rights activist, a peace worker, and a public servant. He is, the, he is the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. He was formerly the Justice Secretary 
Solicitor General, Cabinet Secretary, Governor of Isabella, and he was also the Chairman of the Government Negotiating Panel with the CPP NPA from 2001 to 2004. He was also a member, he was also a member of the 16th Congress by being a representative of the one BAP party list. As a colleague and leader in the Department of Labor and Employment or the DOLE, our guest speaker has always been a very appreciative leader. He would regularly say thank you, salamat, maraming salamat, and would even thank, thank you in front of senior officials, colleagues, and workers in the department to show his appreciation. He would mention the things that you have done, which he really appreciated, and this was during Monday flag raising ceremonies. This was during pre-COVID days when we had Monday flag raising ceremonies. He was also a very empathetic person. I remember he would, when there are rallies in front of the Dole building, he would actually invite them to come up to his office or to, or to invite or invite them to attend our senior officials meeting because he would like us to listen to the concerns of the workers or the or the or the uh, persons having a rally outside of the office he would also leave the building and talk with the rallyists themselves if he is not able to do so he would always assign a senior official in the person of an undersecretary to engage with the rallies and find out their concerns and come up with resolutions to their concerns. He, is also a, um, he, he also has courage as a, as a leader. As a member of an organization, sometimes it is hard to give your opinion or uh, voice your voice your opinion or voice your ideas or give your feedback um, or flag a concern for someone who is higher than you. But our guest of honor and speaker has never allowed conflicts to fester and would have the courage to um, to allow us to uh, say our concerns and uh, move into the right direction as far as conflicts are concerned. And lastly, he has always treated us, his colleagues in the department with respect. Whenever there are decisions to be made in the office, he would listen to all the concerns and to all the sides Make a, decision, make a decision, and he would be very transparent about decisions. He would tell us what decisions have been made and how these decisions uh, came up. So in the department, he has cultivated a culture and a climate of trust and respect. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming <laughs> Secretary Silvestre H. Bellio III, our guest of honor and speaker. Secretary Bellio. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Ma'am Bioli. Gumaganda kayo, ah. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Hello. Peter, good 
good afternoon. Sir. Tony, good afternoon. Ricky, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Kumusta po? Ano na ba ako? Pinapasalita na ba ako? Ha? Ah, magsasalita na ba ako? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello ba? I just came in eh. Okay na po. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon po, President Peter. Governor Secretary. President Ricky, Ma'am Bioli. How are you, sir? Of course, uh, Anthony. Ewan ko ko nandiyan si President Rolly ng Rolly Francia. Uh, my sir, dear Tarya, good afternoon. Again, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to address the members of a highly respected organization of men and women dedicated to the global service of mankind. With the track record of the Rotary in serving humanity, I am very certain that the pandemic has brought us out the best among the Filipino Rotarians. This, of course, includes the members of the Rotary Club of Makati and the Club of Makati Premier District. Bago yata ito, itong Makati Premier District. Yes, sir. It sounds like the Rotary Club of Dabao, of which I was once a member. Well, my dear Rotarians, the COVID-19 pandemic which has rapidly evolved into an economic crisis, generated a job crisis of unprecedented magnitude. And in order to effectively rebuild our economy, we need to take actions that would prevent further disruption in our business operation, as well as the labor market. And as we emerge from this help, crisis with higher level of challenges, it is imperative for us to rebuild our economy by empowering our workforce and our community. I have taken note of the initiatives of organizations like your Rotary Clubs in taking to heart the importance of promoting the welfare of our workers and in protecting their rights, ensuring their benefits, their safety and health amidst the very, very raging health crisis. The partnership of government with the private sector is a vital pillar in shaping effective, balanced and acceptable policy responses to this very undaunting challenge. This is necessary if we are to carve out a sustainable recovery plan. From our end in the department, we have adopted policies for the preservation of jobs and the protection of workers in areas of occupational safety and health. These are, of course, on top of the emergency and short-term social amelioration assistance that we have provided so far. In the early stage of the crisis, our department issued guidelines on flexible work arrangements that encourage the enterprises to adopt alternative work schemes to promote continued business operations and mitigate worker income loss. This includes arrangement like telecommuting, work from home arrangement, reduce work days or hours, and even rotation and forced leave. Jointly with the Department of Trade and Industry, we are all aware that we have issued interim guidelines on the prevention and control of COVID-19 in workplaces mandating workers and employers to strictly observe minimum health protocols and standards to lessen the risk of infection. 
Dole also issued another set of guidelines on workplaces, precautionary health measures, along with additional guidelines that cover worker entitlements, such as leave of absence, hospitalization benefits, and social security compensation. In support of workers affected by the pandemic, please take note that we have provided in year 2020 close to 660,000 workers in the private sector, which cost us 3 billion, 300 million in financial assistance under the so-called COVID-19 Adjustment Ratio Program, come for short, utilizing our regular fund in the department. More than 420,000 workers in the informal sectors, like yung mga labandera, yung mga sidewalk vendors, yung mga tricycle drivers, even yung mga, mga manicurist, manicurista, they were given 1.6 billion in emergency employment under our tulong tanghana buhay sa ating disadvantage or displaced workers. This is our so-called TUPAD program. We also disbursed about 3.5 billion for about 350,000 OFWs who were displaced by the pandemic. We did this under our so-called program ACAP or Abut Kamay Ang Pagtulong. Pero ang ginamit namin budget dito is the budget provided under Bayanian to Heal as One Part One. And then further under Bayanian to Recover as One Act Two, an additional 4.1 billion was allocated to, again, our program called CAMP for formal sector workers. Then we also got another 6.2 billion for our TUPAD program, again, for the benefit of the informal workers. And in addition, we also got 2 billion for our program for our overseas workers under the program called ACAP, an additional 5 billion for OWAS emergency repatriation program. Just recently, my dear Rotarians, we decided to waive the occupational health and safety training fee for micro, small, and medium enterprises in line with our objective of enhancing workplace health and safety and ease the burden on enterprises already adversely affected by the pandemic. Let me emphasize that departments host of programs and policy measures to caution the ill effects of the health crisis on the labor sector were formulated in consultation with our social partners and stakeholders. Discussion with labor and business group on the health and socioeconomic impacts of the pandemic helped shape these programs and solutions. Thus, an occasion such as this is very important to collectively formulate policies that help support our businesses along with our workers still reading from economic dissertation brought about by COVID-19. My dear Rotarians, the government is tracking the path to bounce back and recover from the impact of the pandemic. At the center of this is the implementation of a national employment recovery strategy, nurse for short, to stimulate, to stimulate the economy and the employment, to stimulate support enterprises, to stimulate jobs and income, and to protect 
workers in all workplaces. In pursuing this road to recovery, we don't lose sight of the core mandate of our department, and that is to ensure that every Filipino worker enjoys decent and productive enjoy employment. We therefore look forward to seeing this recovery strategy translated to concrete action in partnership with the private sector. Let me address the challenges I have cited earlier as we move together towards accelerating employment recovery towards decent work and better normal in the coming months. In closing, allow me to express my appreciation to the Rotary's effort in being part of the national goal to help stimulate economic activities and to support the protection of workers in all workplaces. My dear Rotarians, our success in the building economy will be measured heavily by the strength of the partnership between the government and the private sector, especially the Rotarians. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Secretary Delio, for that very informative talk. Um, looking now at our participants, I'm sure there are a lot of questions that they need to ask. Just a reminder, just uh, you may type in your questions in the comment box, or you may just raise your hand in case you want to ask your questions personally. Seeing that there are still no questions from the comment box, uh, are there any <laughs> questions from the gallery? Louis, Tony Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's who, who? Jun, Jun, Jun Palafox? Yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. Is that Jun? Is that yeah. Palafox? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Jun. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you for sharing uh, the secondary value, and thank you for taking time to to meet with us. It may be a segue question, but uh, if I may. Uh, we used to be called, I used to work abroad and we were called uh, Filipino expatriates. But sometime mid-80s, it was the brand Filipino expat was downgraded to OFW, sounds like prisoners of war. And in fact, when I was an expat, I got the same package, Europeans and Americans. When the Filipino brand was downgraded to OFW, even their compensation package went down. And I heard there's a proposed department of OFW for something. Why, why don't we go back to Filipino expats or global Filipinos? We don't call the Americans here OAW, the Japanese OJW, and so on. They're called expats. So the brand went down, even the population package of Filipinos abroad. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, June. Thank you very much, uh, uh, I don't know if <laughs> calling our overseas workers as OFWs is considered a degradation. As a matter of fact, uh, June, we all know that our OFWs are what we call the Bagong Bayani. Oh, yeah, Bagong Bayani is better. The modern day heroes, modern day, or modern day heroes. And they're not uh, called heroes for nothing. Because yeah. the fact is, our OFWs have contributed, consistently contributed to our economy by all more than, I think, more than 1% of our yeah. national budget. You are talking of about $30 billion a year contribution to our economy. That is why, uh, with all due respect, calling a worker, a Filipino worker, as an OFW is not, in a manner of speaking, degrading them. In fact, we are uh, glorifying them, we call them when we call them OFW. That is why when this uh, pandemic came about, the president immediately instructed us to provide what we call, we call now as ACAP, as a uh, immediate 
cash assistance to all OFWs who were displaced. And when we say displaced, it means OFWs who lost their job abroad, or even if they did not lose their job, they could not report to office because of the pandemic. So I think it's a, it's a, no, it's a clear distinction between the Filipino expat and our uh, overseas Filipino workers. Yeah, why not the global Filipinos there? Yeah. Because even yeah. the professionals, they don't want to be called OFWs. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Well, well, uh, <laughs> you but uh, I think Louis, just thinking aloud. Yeah. Yeah. Louis. Thank you, Thank you John. But, but I, I think Louis, it's the first uh, time I have a question I to ask. That, uh, <laughs> they don't want to be called OFWs. In fact, they're very proud to, call, to be called OFWs. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you I thank think you. we have a question from uh, George Barcelon. George? Yes, yes, yes. Seguelo, magandang hapon po. George. George. <laughs> anyway, I just want to ask, uh, you mentioned about some of the financial aid, no? Sa mga labor sector. Of course, yung, yes, when we started having this COVID uh, qu uh, quarantine, uh, the DOLE has the camp, the COVID uh, uh, adjustment uh, measurement program. And then now it's a different name, no? I, I'm just wondering, although our unemployment uh, data yeah. now is single digits, high single digits, but then the unemployment is still very high, double digits, about 20%. Uh, yeah. In the Bayanihan 3 uh, that uh, Speaker uh, Lord Alan Velasco is proposing, there's a budget of uh, 100 billion pesos no? uh, for, the, for the household, uh, marginalized household. But I don't see any specific assistance for the labor sector. And then, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Marami din yung informal sectors. Uh, and, then, and then this goes hand in hand because we're now, I mean, some of the economies are talking about stagflation, di ba? Stagnation of the economy and inflation. Of course, inflation is not our doing. Uh, ang mabilihin, mahal. The meat, everything is expensive, no? So in, uh, in one of my interviews, uh, I mentioned that uh, hopefully uh, there should be another tranche of uh, ayuda and maybe Department of Labor through uh, the uh, very hardworking secretary, Secretary <laughs> Bello, you can push for that. Yeah. Para ma, ma push naman the, the, because the economy for the last quarter, uh, for the whole year is almost 10%, no negative. Uh, it would be good if there's money, uh, amelioration, so that the first quarter of our economy will not be too negative. Negative pa rin, but sana nga single digits. So uh, maybe you can share your thoughts on this, Secretary. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. Uh, by coincidence, I had, la I had breakfast, early breakfast with Secretary Wendell Abisado uh, this morning. And you know what, George? In our budgetary proposal for 2021, we propose a budgetary allocation of 52 billion as a wage subsidy program, not for the employees, but for the employers. It is our uh, attempt. It's a program to request our employers not to terminate or retrench any of their employees and from this 52 billion wage subsidy program, we will answer from 25 to 50% of the salaries of the employer, employees. In effect, we are going to, we will talk, if nakuha namin yung budget na yon, what we plan to do is ask yung ating mga business enterprises, especially those are micro, small, and medium, not to terminate or retrench any yeah, of their employees yeah. or yung mga nag-suspend noong araw, nag-terminate temporarily to re rehire them and we will provide from 25 to 50% of the salary of their workers. Yan po yung programa namin. Ngayon, mukhang hindi sa nasama, but then this morning, I had the occasion to, take, to talk to Secretary uh, Wendell Abisado and sabi ko, baka naman pwede pang... Isama pa rin yung request namin for a 
Yes, 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 yes. Salary wage subsidy for the yeah, players. Yeah. And yeah. sabi niya, sige, sumulat ka sa amin and I will find out how we can help the department in providing this wage subsidy to the employers. Para mabuhay mo na yung employers, mabuhay mo rin yes, yung yes. employment status Thank ng you. mga workers. Ganun. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, Anyways, ma, magkaroon tayo ng positive action yeah. in that. George. Secretary, maraming salamat. For Secretary, thank you for sharing that. No, uh, Definitely, uh, alam mo, PCCI, ang, the major constituents are the MSMEs, di ba? At saka PCCI yes, and ECO yeah. will be very happy to, uh, uh, to, um, to go on board on this program. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank yes, you. thank you, George. Thank you, George. Sana makuha natin yun. Okay, sige. And now we go to the chat box. I have three questions here. Uh, from uh, PVP Ricky Trinidad. Uh, Secretary Bellio, please comment on the 100 peso daily wage hike that the labor groups are asking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Uh, you know, we have what we call now the National Wage and Productivity Commission or board. And every year they assess the economic situation in every region and on the basis of which they come up with a recommended wage adjustment. Ngayon, talking about this 100 peso wage increase demand from our workers, yung ating wage board is now meeting. And, but I did not want to preempt yung by making a comment on the, on the worthiness of this the petition for increase. Pero kailangan ang sabi ko sa kanila, when we talk of wage uh, level, we talk of the needs of the employees. But we have to balance this to the capacity of the employers. Kasi kailangan i-balance mo yan. Eh. Hindi naman pwedeng you just consider the needs of the other without talking about the capacity of the other party. So, yun ang aking advice. I do not want to preempt them by commenting on the, the merit of the petition, but I just told them na i-balance nyo yung interest ng workers with that of the employers. Kasi yun ang importante dyan. Eh. Kasi pag in-increase mo, at hindi talaga makayanan ng employer, baka magsasara. And to my mind, what is most important to the employee is not so much on the pay scale, but more on the status of employment, yung security of tenure nila. So yun po ang ano, uh, status na yun ng petition for a, a wage increase. Okay, Secretary Bellio. Uh, this uh, second question uh, will be as you know from what you have uh, cited in your speech earlier. Uh, this is a question from past president Junjun Dairit, um, yes. talking about displacement of Filipino workers abroad. How many of these Filipino workers abroad have been repatriated as a result of the pandemic? And what percentage of the total OFWs does this number represent, the number of displaced or workers who have lost their jobs overseas, sir? Thank you, Junjun. As of 2 o'clock this morning, we have repatriated 434,000 OFWs. And they represent about probably 60% of the documented OFWs. I have to emphasize yung documented because aside from the documented OFWs, there are also many undocumented OFWs. But whether documented or undocumented, they contribute to our national economy. Ngayon yung dumating na po, by the way, I have to start by saying that the repatriation was as the cause of government. And I mentioned earlier that, that the president allocated 5 billion for the repatriation of our OFWs who were displaced or affected negatively by the pandemic. So meron pa tayong mga na naiwan doon, pero just recently, just for the information of our dirotarians, noon there were about uh, uh, 80,000 more for repatriation. And they were the, the OFWs who requested repatriation. Kaya lang, 
suddenly may mga request na hindi na hindi na kami nagpa hindi na kami magpapalipatrate we have decided to stay and you know why because most of them were given vaccine na vaccinate sila and when they were given the vaccine their hope of being reemployed became very high so they opted to stay na lang so yun po ang ano yung ang ating ano ang ating statistics on the number that uh, we have repatriated and in the percentage in relation to the other documented OFWs. And by the way, when, uh, June, when we talk of repatriation, we mean we flew them in at the cost of government, we had them uh, tested, and while waiting for the result of the test, it took, uh, it involved about before it was 14 day quarantine, they stayed in hotels. And when we say hotel, we're talking of Sofitel, Diamond, Manila Hotel, and so on. We are also at the cost of government. Their food, their medicine were provided by government and they were considered repatriated when they have reached their final destination. Ibig sabihin, doon na sila sa kanilang mga minabahal sa buhay nila doon sa probinsya kung nasaan sila nang galing. Okay, thank you, uh, Secretary, for that uh, answer. Um, I, I, the following question is actually a segue to that uh, earlier question from Jun Jun Dairit. Uh, this comes from past President Bene Limhoko. The pandemic aside, there are a large, large number of OFWs because there are not enough jobs available locally, sir. So uh, what is the government doing to create jobs? That is the question of uh, P.P. Rene. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, it is uh, bearing with our latest memorandum or joint memorandum agreement among about eight agencies. And the, this is called the National Economic Recovery Strategy. And this was signed by the finance, the trade and industry, NEDA, agriculture, the DOLE, of course, and then public works, and many other agencies. Pero ang programa namin dito unang-una is from DOT, DTI, and finance, yung we either decrease or eliminate taxes for the employers para ma-assure yung kanilang survivor under this pandemic. Then, agriculture will come with uh, up with a plant, plant, plant program. Tanim ng tanim, ng mga gulay, mga bigas, mais, and everything to generate employment at the same time produce the, 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 ne the necessities of uh, every Filipino. Then we have, of course, yung ano, yung programa ng, ng Department of Public Works and that is the build, build, build. You must have noticed the very active activities of construction workers. With this plus uh, build, build, build infrastructure program of our president, we are slowly, slowly, uh, uh, Activating yung construction construction industry natin, including yung hotel and restaurant this industry. Kaya ito po yung ating mga ginagawang mga paraan para ma, ma buhay natin ulit, ma, ma recover natin yung ating uh, ano tawag dito ang ating business. And as an end result, when business is good, then we are talking of good employment and that is where we come in how to generate to protect and preserve uh, employment aside from the amelioration from programs which i mentioned which is yung tupad yung camp and yung uh, akap for the three classification of workers informal formal and overseas workers and of course, yung sinabi ko, binanggit ko kanina, yung aming wage subsidy program, na hopefully, will be finally approved by our president. Yeah, thank you, Secretary Bellion. Uh, as a matter of fact, 
um, there is this create bill, which is now waiting the signature of the president uh, into yeah, law. Yeah, uh, this seeks to spur the economy by, among others, uh, reducing corporate income tax, which you have just mentioned, yeah, while, yeah. in order to spur the businesses. So um, apart from the National Recovery Trust that your department is doing, would there be other complementary action from the Department of Labor and Employment to be able to uh, uh, put into fruition the objectives of this uh, CREATE law or CREATE Act rather? Well, uh, yes, uh, Louis, just as I mentioned, as our, you know, our immediate uh, response to the needs of our workers, we came up with three, these three programs uh yung COPAD for the informal workers, yung CAMP for the formal workers, and the ACAP for the overseas workers. And in addition, I think one of the most effective way for uh, our department to preserve and protect employment is to maintain industrial peace. And hindi uh, pang bobola, but you know, I have observed that our employers have become very, very compassionate. Ang dami namin nakausap na kung maaari, huwag muna kayong mag-terminate. Kung, kung kailan, talagang mahirap ang negosyo, baka pwede yung, you remember yung aming advisory about the flexible working arrangement. Maraming, ano, maraming kumpanya na instead of terminating, they resorted to flexible work arrangement. Uh, binawasan ng working hours, yung iba, they can come, they can work from home. May yung iba, they are allowed to report every other week. Ganun. In other words, yung, you can see the compassion of the, of the, of the business group. Now, instead of terminating or changing the workers, they resorted to this flexible working arrangement. Ayun po ang aming nagagawa para ma ma recover natin yung ating uh, economy at the same time uh, uh, lessen yung unemployment rate natin yes yes secretary this question uh, comes from Jolion Tiglao uh, secretary Bebot Bell after the pandemic some are predicting that the new economy will not go back to 2019 model or the pre-pandemic model but it will be hybrid that is with a significant portion of our businesses remaining online or digital. So what government programs do we have or do, does your department has to prepare the labor force for this new economy? Well, we have our program which we call the Job Start and the uh, what is this uh, GRP programs. Ito yung mga special skill, skill trainings for our youthful workers. And of course, we also have a, a TESDA who is now training, ups, ups, upscaling the technological uh, ano, capacity of our workers. Na upscale na ang ating mga workers ngayon to, to address the demand of uh, the new technologies in the future of work. Kaya nandyan po ang TESDA in upskilling our workers. In, in our case, we have what we call the space, we have the jeep, and we have the job start, so that we can already uh, strengthen or improve the quality of our workers at a very early stage. But as pagdating ng ano panahon, ay hindi tayo mahuli sa the future of work. We call them the future of work. Yes, there's another question coming from uh, PP Junjun. Is job creation the primary mandate of the DOLE, or is that the mandate of other departments, such as the DTI, or the Department of Agriculture, or other departments, sir? That is true, sir. In fact, uh, we have been uh, emphasizing that the mandate of the Department of Labor is to protect and preserve employment. The generation of poor is left to the capacity of DTI, public works, and other agencies. But having said that, we still you know, uh, help in the generation of workers. Like, for example, we have a program 
which provides for livelihood assistance to the disadvantaged members of society. Now, when we provide this uh, the livelihood assistance and the livelihood uh, succeeds, then it also will produce employment openings. Kaya yun, kagaya na sinabi nyo, ang mandate talaga namin is to preserve and protect employment. Pero at the same time, we don't just leave it to the TPI or to the Department of Finance or to the Department of Public Works or to the Department of Transportation. We also help in trying to generate more employment openings or opportunities. Well, I, I don't see any more questions in the chat room. So, I, okay, George, George, go ahead, George. Oh, sorry. Uh, Secretary Bello, just, just to share, uh, as far as uh, creating more jobs, no? Uh, of course, lately, uh, the, the bill, uh, the law on create has been passed. Okay. And I think that gives us some flexibility to be more attractive to foreign direct investments. Yes. Uh, in my capacity as an ASEAN BAC member, ASEAN Business Advisory Council, I had the opportunity, of course, going, traveling uh, different ASEAN countries no? and meet also different chamber from, uh, from both Europe and uh, North America. And one of the issues uh, that really is uh, of concern is really the, the labor issue here. I don't know somehow over a long period of time, there is still this negativism, negative views no, regarding our labor. And uh, I mean, I think we have to do something about it because we do need foreign direct investment to create more jobs. Okay? If you look at, if you consider other countries, like, uh, of course, uh, on the top of the list as far as foreign direct investments, it's Vietnam, okay? And Indonesia is also very aggressive in attracting foreign direct investments. Uh, and and I, I think uh, uh, with what a different government agency is doing, we are in the radar, okay? But it's important that they have this uh, view that, uh, Filipinos worldwide are known are for their intelligence and for productivity if they're outside the country. <laughs> okay, I hate to say that, no? But that's the image they get. But pag nandito, iba naman. So I hope that, uh, because I was interviewed about the wage increase, no? And I said, yes, we can, we sympathize, you know, with the uh, cost of living that has gone high, no? Uh, and, and most employers, uh, we don't want to hire people just because of the low minimum wage. We really want to go up the value chain because we have to invest on their skill set. Okay. Yeah. And, that, and that's very important for, for uh, you know, the tripartite, no? uh, government, private, and the labor sector. And, and I hope we can, we can uh, have this message, no? uh, going, uh, sharing this with our uh, labor sector. Uh, you know, you, you know, the man, ECOB is very yeah. uh, friendly with the <laughs> union, okay? <laughs> and uh, I, I just hope because I want them to know that there are opportunities when you think other countries, uh, it's not the the workers are getting jobs. It dapat sa atin din. Sige, just to share my thoughts. Sige, yeah. Thank you, George. I agree with you. Na our workers are really uh, very qualified. Their competence is beyond question. Their integrity is beyond the reproach. At uh, mayro lang konting ano tayo ng sinasabi niyo na while we are very attractive for work abroad, mayo nagalang ano yung mga investors. And I think uh, their concern is about the labor relation. Yeah. And I I I'm, I can say, na in a way we have ano we have uh, achieved. We have a very big success in maintaining industrial peace in our country. And pag napabuti pa natin yan, baka yung plano mo na we will become attractive to foreign investment. And foreign investment means best good business. And good business means good employment. We might achieve that with this one. Kasi unti-unti naman natin na may maintain yung industrial peace in our Medyo malakas na. Nakita mo naman ang cooperation between the workers and the employers ngayon na, na 
na, nakikita mo na eh. You, you don't see any more yes, 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 strike, yes. no more no more demonstration. So, kung meron yes. mga strike na na uh, na mediate natin. So hopefully the trend will improve more so that we can attract foreign investors. Pero as to attract, attract the attraction of our workers, ang daming you, you would you believe uh, yeah. my dear Yotarians that I have a request for 50,000 nurses in one country alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, one country alone is asking for 50,000 nurses and medical workers. Another, another country is asking the president, our president, to exempt them doon sa deployment cap para mapadala natin yung ating mga workers. That's how attractive our workers are. And pretty soon, when we can show to the world that there is industrial peace in our country, we will see the influx of investors. Any, anyway, Secretary, uh, of course, private sector wants to thank you also no, for your intercession sometimes for overzealous labor inspectors. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> and, and we're glad yeah. that you are here because you are able to intercede. Okay? Yeah. Because that's one area also we've been hearing. No? Even those people in the export processing zone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's important. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Okay, Secretary Belly, we have an interesting question here coming from our member Keith Harrison. Um, one of the hardest hit sectors is the sector of tourism. What, when do you expect that there might be an opening of the community quarantine settings uh, so that the jobs in this sector will return, sir? You know, that is one of the headaches of uh, Secretary Berna, <laughs> Berna Puyat. But we commissioned with her and uh, we are helping her try to revive the, revive the uh, tourism industry. Actually, ang nakakano naman dyan sa tourism industry is yung man, ang daming restrictions. Ang daming restrictions. Ang daming mga protocols. And talagang ano, talagang you have to really balance yung health and economy and tourism. Kasi gusto naman namin buksan yung tourism to the world. Eh, worried naman tayo, lalo na yung dumating na naman yung COVID variant na yan. When we were about to open to the world for the tourism, then came this variant. So we had to come up with the resolution restricting the entry of citizens from 29 countries. Eh, ito yung mga tourism generation eh. America, Spain, Germany, lahat yan restrict natin eh, because of this variant. But uh, pretty soon, when we can, with the coming of this vaccine, baka ma, ma, ano, ma, 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 ano, ma decrease yung quarantine, and hopefully, magiging normal na operation ng ating tourism industry. Okay, I think we are down to our last two questions here, but uh, Pipe Rene, Jim Hoko, you have... Um, you posted some of your uh, remarks in the chat room. Would you care to address the secretary himself uh, for your comments, P.P. Rene. Okay, so P.P. Rene is not... Uh... Okay. Ah, yeah, P.P. Rene, go, go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Secretary, the reason I'm commenting on this is only because I thought the Dole will have a bigger role in terms of, for example, matching skills with openings in the labor sector, which is difficult, and if done properly, can spar employment. The other is, of course, uh, workers in the sunset industries will have to move into sunrise industries, but somebody has to help them develop the skills. And I thought the dole will also have a bigger role than this. Thank you. That is true, Rene. That is true. You are very nice, very accurate observation. And that is what uh, our TESDA, we have a department called TESDA, Rene. And it is now in the process of uh, improving or upscaling 
the capacity and the skill of all our workers. Yun po ang mandato ng ating testa. Okay, the last question will again comes from PP Junjun. Secretary, companies and potential employers are very worried about labor activism and strikes. So how does the DOLE walk the tightrope of protecting workers' interests and the concern the employers? That's the last question for the day, Secretary. Yeah. Thank you for the question. In fact, that's what I emphasize when I mentioned about attracting investment, and that is maintaining industrial peace in the forefront. Kasi, pagka merong uh, in disturbance in our uh, in the relation between the workers and the employers, hindi ka makakatrack na investors, either local or foreign investors. That is why as much as possible, we encourage yung dialogue, yung tripartism. When I, I mentioned in my studies that when we come up with programs, there is always a prior dialogue. We talk to management, we talk to labor, so that whatever programs we come, we come up with will be acceptable to both the workers and the employers. So, yun ang pinakamagandang gagawin natin. Yung constant dialogue and the principle of tripartism. That's the only way we can maintain peace in our labor fund. Para sa ganun ay we can attract not only foreign investors, but also our local investors. And we have many of them. We have many of our local investors. Yes, indeed. Uh... Mr. Secretary, indeed, to be able to uh, preserve and to generate employment, these two important sectors, yes. business and labor, must be seen as must be complementary and not adversarial entities. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we now go to the responses of our presidents. May I call now President Ricky of uh, Makati Premier District for his response? President Ricky. Thank you, PP Louis. We are delighted to hear from uh, Labor Secretary Bello the clarifications from regarding the many issues of our labor force. And also for disclosing the government allocated budget for the displaced Filipino workers, as well as the new labor policies addressing the health crisis. Your answer to my question earlier about the 100 peso daily wage hike asked by the labor groups illustrates the, the balancing act between labor and business. And um, I'm, I'm happy to know that your primary focus is job security versus increased pay. Thank you, Secretary Bello, for uh, providing a calming effect to both labor and business. I pray for your success and the success of our road to recovery. Maraming salamat, sir. Maraming salamat. Thank you, President Thank Ricky. you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Now, I would like to call on President Peter for his closing remarks and for his response to the club. Thank you, P. Louis. In economics, we are taught that an entrepreneur uses the three factors of production, land, labor, and capital, to earn a profit. Of these three factors, labor, whether physical labor or mental labor, is the active factor of production. It is the factor that starts production to make the passive factors, land and capital, productive themselves. That is why classical economists like Ricardo and Karl Marx regarded labor as the main source of production. Yet labor is not only an important factor of production. It plays a great role in economic development and in nation building. For an individual is both a producer and a consumer. A technically sound and intelligent labor serves as the strong backbone of a nation. An efficient, dedicated, hardworking, and intelligent labor force that makes proper use of the scarce natural resources of a country builds a nation. So when a calamity, natural calamity or a medical crisis like the pandemic we are all enduring these days happens, it disrupts the lives of the working people and the economy suffers. In 1891, Pope Leo XIII came out with an encyclical 
Rerum Novarum, which articulated the Catholic Church's response to the social conflict in the wake of capitalism and industrialization, which had provoked socialist and communist movements and ideologies. The letter discusses the relationships and mutual duties between labor and capital, as well as government and its citizens. It addressed the need for some amelioration of the miserable conditions of the working class and how government and private sector can help their working conditions. The message of that encyclical remains relevant even after 130 years. It is said that employees are the greatest asset of a company. Even a nonprofit humanitarian organization such as ours is no exemption. Presidents come and go, but our projects, all the new, continue to function as they should because we have an efficient and effective secretariat that are treated well. Thus, the greatest investment one can make is in people, as aptly pointed out earlier by Rotarian George Barcelona. A story comes to mind where the chief finance officer asks the CEO, what happens if we invest in developing our people and then they leave us? To which the CEO replied, what happens if we don't and they stay? But more than training is how we treat our employees. To borrow the words of Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Group, train people well enough so they can live. Treat them well enough so they don't want to. Our esteemed speaker spoke to us about partnering with the private sector in protecting workers' benefits, safety, and health amidst the COVID-19 situation. He recalled how the pandemic has created a job crisis. He shared how the Department of Labor has responded well to the early challenges of the pandemic to address the working conditions of the employees, as it issued guidelines that include work rotation, forced leave, and social security compensation, among others. He further shared to us how the government provided funds to aid and assist the displaced formal, informal, as well as our OFWs, amounting to more than 25 billion by my count, as part of the government's national employment recovery system to stimulate jobs and protect our workers. This is part of the government's efforts to achieve a better normal, stimulate economic activities and ensure that every worker acquires a decent and productive employment. He ended this presentation with a challenge and a reminder that the success of our country's economic recovery program depends heavily on the partnership of the government and the private sector. I fully subscribe to this reminder and challenge of the good secretary. But first and foremost, we need to revisit at how we regard our workers in terms of business relationship. Earlier, I pointed out how labor is an important factor of production. I also pointed out how labor plays a great role in economic development and in nation building. Maybe it's time we look at our, sec at our workers, not just as a mere factor of production, but as partners who deserve more than just a paycheck. We need to make sure they enjoy a safe and healthy workplace that promotes their well-being. That to my mind will spell the difference and the success of the desired partnership between the government and the private sector in seeing to it that our workers get what they rightfully deserve. Just Agnina, Secretary Silvestre Bellion, third. Thank you for giving us your time, your very valuable insights on how the private sector can help in protecting our workers' benefits, safety, and health amidst the COVID-19 situation. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati, our lovely aunts, our district governor, Chacha Camacho, the other Rotarians from the different Rotary Clubs in our district, especially to my classmates, the Perfect Vision Presidents, our Rotaractors, and all the other guests in attendance, Please accept our heartfelt gratitude for taking time and sharing with us your insights. Once again, agyaman kami unay, Secretary Bebot Bellio, thank you. And as tokens of our appreciation for your time and service, we shall giving you, be giving you Yaman a copy of our 50th anniversary coffee table book, which contains our club's 50 years of community service and fellowship, together with a bottle of red wine to enjoy while going through the pages of our book. Once again, Secretary Bellio, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Press Peter, for thank your you, usual. Thank you, Presbyter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Press Peter, for your usual very inspired response. Before we adjourn the meeting, may I request everyone to please, please turn on your camera for our photo op. 
Uh, Ron, can you cue us? Okay. Yeah. okay, one, two. One more. One last. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, thank, thank you, Secretary. You, thank you, Secretary. 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 Thank you,